This video is about resistors in series and parallel. Now, I'm not going to do a very classic and standard derivation as, as which, is, which is done in your books and the ones that you're supposed to write in the exams. I'm going to do a little bit different kind of derivation. And the reason I'm going to do that is because this is going to help you understand exactly what's going on when the resistors are connected in series and, the, and when they're in parallel and you'll be able to understand why the equivalent resistance takes that shape. So this derivation is to give you some sort of an intuition behind what happens when resistors are in series and when they're in parallel. But, but disclaimer, not to be used in exams, don't write this is not a standard derivation. So imagine we have a resistor over here, resistor R1 and we have another resistor so let's put another resistor over here and let's say that resistor that resistance is r2 now the question is what happens if i take this resistance and i connect this to this resistance this way end to end i make a connection like this the question is what's going to happen to the total resistance so take the two resistances so the question is, what is the total resistance? So what is the effective resistance? Another way to put it is, if I were to replace these two resistors with a single resistor, so let's take a single resistor. If I were to take these two resistors and put one single resistance, I'm going to call that resistance as RS. What is that effective value of RS? That's what we need to calculate in this episode. Now, instead of treating these two resistors as resistors i'm going to treat them as wires all right so imagine that resistor one is just a wire which has some length l1 which has some area a and because of this it has some resistance r1 and i'm going to treat this guy r2 also as some wire which has a new length let's call that length as l2 and I'm going to assume they have the same cross-sectional area and that's why this is not a standard derivation because I'm not doing a very general case. I'm taking a case where the two wires have exactly the same cross-sectional area. Nevertheless, it's going to help you give some intuition behind what's going on. And let's say the resistance here is R2. Okay. Now you should remember that the resistance R1 can be written as some constant rho into L1 divided by A. That's how resistance depends upon the dimensions. And similarly, resistance R2 is rho into L2 divided by A. And the question now is, what happens if I connect them in series? What happens if I connect them? So if I connect them end to end, so I have to connect this end all the way till here. If I do that connection, what I will see is that I will get now a huge wire, a big wire, which has the total length of L1 plus L2 and it has the same area A and so the new resistance Rs is simply going to be that same rho which is the resistivity which is a constant and I'm assuming they have the same material also I did not mention that but they have the same material times the total length L1 plus L2 divided by A but if you notice this is just R1 over here plus R2 and that's what happens when you connect resistors in series although I did this derivation by making the area to be the same this could be proved to be a general result and now you can understand why the resistances just add up if you think of it this way because just the length increases and as the length increases obviously the resistance should increase and that's why in series resistances add up and what's the definition of series resistance well, we say the resistance is in series if the current through them is the same. All right, so let's put that current over here. They should have the same current. So if the current on this resistance is I, I, and the current through this resistance must also be I, then we will say that they are in series over here. And then here also they're going to be high. So that's what happens when you have resistors in series. Now let's see what's going to happen when we put them in parallel. So the question is, what if I take this resistor over here, let's go down, let's scroll down over here, take this resistor and take one over here and take one more and put them in parallel this way. Okay, so this is R1 
and this is R2 and I'm going to connect them in parallel like this. This is the kind of connection that I'm going to do now. And so the question now is, what is that one single resistance, oops, that one single resistance that I should replace these guys with? And let me call this as RP, that's a single resistance, which is an equivalent, okay? These, this single resistor must be equivalent as these two resistances. Again, the best way, the very intuitive way to derive this is again, I'm gonna treat these guys as not two resistors, but just two wires, okay? Imagine this guy is a wire which has some length L and some area A1, okay? And imagine the second fellow, the second resistor is again, a different wire which has the same length this time I'm keeping the length same, same length L and it has a different area of cross section. Imagine this one this is a little bit more thicker and the area is A2. Now when I put them in parallel, when I put them in parallel, what's going to look like? Well, you see, it's like keeping one on top of the other. So keeping them in parallel is going to look something like this. Put that over here and I'm going to put that over here. And that can be treated as one big wire or a cylinder which has a length L but now has a cross-sectional area of A1 plus A2. So the area over here is A1 plus A2. Again, we can calculate what the individual resistances are. The resistance over here R1 according to the same formula is rho L divided by a1 and the resistance over here R2 is going to be rho L divided by A2. So the question now is what is this effective resistance, the resistance of this big cylinder? Well that resistance is going to be by definition RP, that is this resistance, the same thing and that is going to be rho L divided by this huge area which is A1 plus A2. So notice that the resistance has actually decreased. It is less than the least value of them because the denominator is big. The resistance has decreased. And this makes a lot of sense because it doesn't matter which two wires you connect as long as they have the same length. It doesn't matter which two wires you connect uh, with, uh, regardless of what their area is. You will always find that the resulting wire will always have a bigger area. And the bigger the area, smaller is the resistance. And that's why in parallel the resistance decreases. Okay, now if I take the reciprocal of this, now you understand why we take the reciprocal. Because the areas are getting added up in the denominator and I really can't do anything about it unless I take the reciprocal. If I take the reciprocal, now I can write this as A1 plus A2 divided by rho L, which I can just write as A1 divided by rho L plus A2 divided by rho L. And now you notice that 1 over RP turns out to be, this is just the reciprocal of R1. 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and there we have it that's what happens when resistors are connected in parallel and what do we mean by parallel resistances well what we mean is that they should have the same voltage so if this point is A and this point is B notice that the voltage across R2 and the voltage across R1 is exactly the same and the same voltage should come over here as well. That's the idea behind parallel resistances. So parallel resistances have the same voltage or parallel connection has the same voltage whereas the series connection has the same current. I hope I was able to give you some intuition behind what goes on over here. See you next time.